Hello and welcome to this video. In this video we're going to look at QuickBooks Self-Employed for UK resellers. Hello, my name is Aaron Patrick. I'm a Chartered Accountant, Certified Trainer and UK Reseller. And today we're going to have a look at why QuickBooks Self-Employed can be really useful for UK resellers. Welcome to all the wonderful new subscribers that have just joined the channel. One thing I thought and I've just seen in the comment is the confusion about how to get started in QuickBooks and especially if you're going to use QuickBooks Self-Employed. So we thought we'll tackle that one first, have a quick run through of what to do first, how to get everything up and running and then in a future video we'll look at doing the same thing but for the full version of QuickBooks and then you'll be able to have a gauge of which one's going to be worthwhile for you. Don't forget we're going to have a look at a video very soon about what those different versions of QuickBooks do and how to figure out which for your business is the best version of QuickBooks to go through. Now remember in both versions of QuickBooks, that's the normal version and the self-employed version, you're going to be able to do it either from your mobile phone or from the computer itself. We're going to concentrate first of all on the computer and flip over to the mobile phone and see what can be done on both platforms. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. Okay then, so first and foremost, when you're put straight into the system, this is the view that you see, and this is basically your dashboard. When we get data actually flowing into the system, it's gonna be a really good place for you to understand how your business is doing, what sort of profits you're making, and it's gonna help you understand what's going into QuickBooks. The first thing you need to do though, is start thinking about getting those transactions in easily. So what I would do is I'd have a, head over to the transaction page, and I'd look at the transaction page, and normally for you, you won't have anything here. All this information below is all just demo data, and you would normally turn up in this place and there'll be absolutely nothing there for you. Now, the key thing to remember here is to attach bank accounts to this page. We said before that probably a good thing to do at this point would be to have a separate bank account. Now, it doesn't have to be a business bank account, but if you can keep yourself a separate bank account, you're going to make your life easier in terms of being able to put data into QuickBooks that relate to the business. So, to add a bank account is really straightforward. We're going to use the Add Count button under the Add Transaction button up here. So, just below Add Transaction, you see there's a little arrow down there, and we're going to press on that and go to Add Account. Then, all you have to do is search for the account that's applicable. So, in this case, I'm going to go for Revolut, continue, and follow the on screen instructions to get my bank connected. <laughs> Once you've connected that bank account up, QuickBooks is going to start importing that information in. And what it will do then is every time your bank gets connected, you're going to have the ability to keep that information coming straight into QuickBooks. Now I'm happy that that's connected, so let's press done. And with that, I now have all these transactions starting to appear. Now the easy thing to do here is if they're personal, I click on the personal button, but if they're business related, I can click on business. So exactly here is me putting money into the business, let's put on personal, that's just going to go straight into it. I could even add a rule, basically every time my name appears, we could add it as an expense. Again, I can split the personal ones out. My next job then is to go through and look at transactions and try and figure out which one of these are legitimate business, which one of these are income, so that I can start actually categorizing them. One thing to note about this page though, is the transactions that appear on here still have one more step. You still need to go through and say what that transaction is. And it's really important you remember that bit. Just because it appears on this list here, doesn't mean that it's been accounted for. You still need to go in, apply some logic, say what that transaction is, put that transaction to the correct category, and then you've dealt with it. Now to speed that process up, you do have the ability within QuickBooks to create rules. So the idea there is that if you keep getting the same thing coming time and time again, so in this case, I'm gonna put them in order of transactions. When I put them in order of transactions, I can start seeing them in groups. And when I see them in groups, I can go actually, all these are purchasers, all these are entertainment, all these are postage. So this is where I can deal with them really nice and quickly. So for example, I can click on this parcel link here. I can put it to business. I'm gonna make sure that I apply the right category. So in this postage. And then as soon as I've got the category right, I press add rule 
and basically says if it finds the word pace uh, pack link in this case then what i want it to do is make sure that i go against what category it is and i can also apply to past transactions if i want to clean it up and keep it all nice and tidy as soon as i press save all those transactions are now been accounted for me i can do the same with these ones i can go through my paypal and anything to do with money going in i could look at putting that in as well so that's how i can quickly go in and account for my expenditure as they're going in so what you want to be doing here is applying a rule against everything that starts happening on a regular basis here's my noki here so this is some business expense and in this case i'm going to put it to entertaining and from here i want to also add a rule and i want to make sure i apply to pass my press save all those transactions have been dealt with so it's gonna be the quickest way for you to stop putting these transactions in you'll notice because i've started putting my expenses through then it starts to see a space of how and start seeing how my business is doing so start recording expenditure for me and going through now i wouldn't stop there one of the other accounts i would want to add is my paypal account so let's go and add paypal And here it is now connecting to my PayPal account. It's going to ask me to add it to it, press continue. And those transactions are now being put into QuickBooks. Now, one thing to know here, one thing to be really aware of is the fact that when you are adding transactions to QuickBooks from your bank, the only the connection to the bank is only allowed to be there for 90 days. So after 90 days, you're going to have to go in and reauthorize it one more time. Now it's adding those transactions in. I've got my PayPal and my main bank account. So for me, majority of the transactions are going to be there. There's still going to be some cash transactions I'm going to deal with, and there's still going to be some other accounts and transactions I want to account for. But majority of them are then start going to automatically appear into my bank account. Okay, finally, we've got that connection. Remember what I said about that 90 days. It's reminding you 15 days before that this connection can expire. So you press done. And now it's not just brought in my PayPal, uh, not just brought in my bank account details, but now it's brought in my PayPal income as well. So you can see now I've got actual income coming in from PayPal. And when the, when the income does come in from PayPal, all I want to do is I want to say it's business, business income, and I might as well add a rule so that every time that business income comes in from PayPal, it gets matched accordingly. Now, the last thing I need to do here is I need to go through all these transactions and I need to make sure they've got a business category assigned against them. Once I've done that, then I know that I've got most of my transactions put into QuickBooks. Now, on this screen, what to do if you found a mistake? So in this case, we've got the PayPal all going to income when actually some of it was us buying goods for the business. If you do spot that there's anything wrong, what I would tend to do is tick the items that are applicable. That gives you a box at the top where you get edit category. I would then put it to cost of goods or sales and press apply. That way it's going to bring those transactions and income in properly. Now, if you've got lots of transactions and you just want to deal with them all at once. So here we've got buying stock, we've got buying stock, we've got buying stock, we've got buying stock, buying stock, buying stock, buying stock. For example, all these are buying stock. If I want to put them all as buying stock straight away, I tick all the items. So I put a tick box in all of them on the left hand side. And I notice this box along the top here. First of all, I need to see, is it personal business? Well, in this case, it's business. I choose a category for them. So cost of goods for resale. And I press apply. And as quick as that, I'm going to be updating all those transactions. Okay, now we've started to put quite a few transactions into QuickBooks. Let's start and have a look at how that's affected our dashboard. As you can see now, it started to bring more relevant information in here for us. So it's telling us how much profit and loss we've had over the last three months. It's telling us what expenses we've had, any accounts that we've got connected. And also, if you click into a little bit more detail, you can understand exactly where those figures are coming from. And don't ever uh, ignore the bit of the very top top here so this area here is all about telling you things you might want to consider in this case it's telling me i've still got 20 transactions to review so there's 20 transactions still on my bank account which i need to account for those transactions are not being included in my profit and loss they're not included in any calculations i'm doing until i review them and basically say if they're business or personal and if they are business i need then need to say what that relates to files is the next area down so that's going to tell you what mileage you've done we'll see it more when we get to our phone app but it's a real quick and easy way of making sure that you don't miss any miles out there 
taxes. The whole taxes area here gives you an opportunity to file a tax return directly in the system. And I'll do another video on exactly how this works, but this is basically going to give you an opportunity to fill in that tax return at the end of a tax year. And it's going to take all the information from the QuickBooks that you've been doing and it's going to put it in there for you to make it really easy for you to put them in. Reports give you a breakdown of how your business is doing. So for example, I could look at see how my profit and loss for the year has been so far. And then also I've got the opportunity to go to invoices. Now you will very rarely need to use this as a UK reseller, but if someone is asking you for a particular invoice, maybe you've done a cash sale, something like that, this can give you an opportunity to record that. So if I'd have done a, a transaction on say Facebook and it was cash book uh, and, and we were paid cash, I could use the create invoice feature and I could record that transaction directly from here. So for example, I could say Facebook marketplace and then at that point you can just say date say what it was you've sold so in this case i don't know i sold some sony headphones and put the price in there as well add to invoice and then all you need to do is press uh, and you can send the invoice out directly from here and then you can even go in and say mark as pay and you can even send a payment receipt if you need to so it just gives you a chance to go in there build up or send invoices directly from the system for those rare occurrences that you need to. Also within the transactions, you do have the top opportunity at the top left hand corner or right hand corner to add manual transactions. You do know you've made maybe a cash expense or anything, you can put the transaction directly in here and that's gonna make your life easier putting those transactions in. Don't forget the top right hand corner, you've got your settings book, box in there it gives you an opportunity to look at where you receipt forwarding so the idea of receipt forwarding in quickbooks is that you can just send the receipt directly to quickbooks and if you send the receipt at quickbooks.com and you can even set it to automatically tell you when quickbooks has received it that's going to give you the option just to forward invoice so for example when ebay sends you your charges invoice saying that this is how much you're going to be charged i tend to put a little forwarding rule on there in my inbox in my actual and then from there you can and then just put as soon as that email is received you send it to receipts at quickbooks.com and then it'll get processed in quickbooks for me also in here is the opportunity to look at your tax profile and that's something again we'll deal with in a lot more detail in a future video now the other main advantage of using quickbooks self-employed is the mobile app so if i get the mobile app out itself and go to qb self-employed first thing it's going to want me to do is sign in using face id and as soon as I come into here, it's going to be very, very similar to that whole thing we were looking at before. So it's giving me the same figures to show me that same dashboard. As I scroll through, I can see all that information there for me, which is really useful. And along the bottom, I get a plus button where I can create an invoice or snap a receipt. So basically saying if I want to create a new form of income or show that I've created an expense. Now, if I snap a receipt, I literally then need to... I literally then need to find a receipt, take a photo of it, press use this photo, and what QuickBooks does is it reads that transaction for you, so you don't have to go through and put it in there. We had that conversation, and we're talking about with Nick, we were talking about how we can apply and put in for cash expenses. As an example, if I've just gone to the trouble of buying something from a car boot, then as I said on the show, I would take a duplicate book. I would take it and put it with that transaction. And again, just snap the receipt. But remember for this one, keep in there the actual transaction that it is you bought or the stock that you bought as well. That's just gonna give you a nice way of keeping that all in line. Also in the app is the mileage tracker. So the way the mileage tracker is, you'll see there I've got turned on auto tracking. And what happens there, as soon as I get in the car and I drive from one place to another, it's going to see that I'm doing a journey and it's going to then record that transaction for me. So I go into here, I look at the transaction I've done. So as of today, I went out and I went to and from my office. So if I'm claiming that as an expense, all I need to do is swipe on it to say it's business. I can say that it's picking up, uh, picking up goods and supplies. And there it is, I've recorded 
that as a business supply a transaction if i need to i could then press and go for personal as well and in the full version of quickbooks so it's not here just yet but in the full version of quickbooks you even get the opportunity to put rules in place to say that when you're going from one place to another then that is always going to be a business transaction and i'm pretty sure that's going to turn up in the self-employed app pretty soon from the self-employed app as well you can go in and put an invoice in place if you need to and this is where you can record new transactions so if you've got a brand new bit of income to put in there you can add that from here so again just like i did with that facebook marketplace i could add that to here and from a transaction point of view i do have the opportunity to add an expense manually which in fairness might be the best and quickest way of adding transactions like when you've gone to the car boot sale and your vendor you can add the amount and you can attach a receipt to it so who did you pay car boot how much did i pay 50p i would put it to my cost of goods or resale attach a receipt take a photo and then i'll take a photo of the stock with that duplicate book use the photo and a good to go and there it is a real quick look at quickbook self-employed as you can see when you get into it and when you start putting transactions it starts to make it that much easier and on this channel we're going to look at a lot more detail in terms of how to deal with more complex transactions or how to deal with transactions more efficiently but for now at least you're understanding exactly what to look at when you first key parts to take away from this though as soon as you have signed up get that bank account attached straight away make sure you then start playing around with adding rules to make sure it starts understanding what those transactions are and get yourself logged into the mobile experience as well. The way QuickBooks works is once you've got your signing credentials, you use the same signing credentials to get into both the desktop and to the mobile app at the same time. And you can even be in both at the same time, no problems whatsoever. Remember, if you are a UK reseller and you do need to get yourself a hand on QuickBooks itself, do get in contact with me and get you some really good deals, including the opportunity if you have three months completely free to give it a test and see how it's going. For more videos based on this exact topic of how a UK reseller can best use QuickBooks to make their life easier, get your tax return sorted, and make sure that you've got it as easy as you possibly can in terms of getting QuickBooks working for you. So join me in the next video where we'll have a look at some more tips and tricks. And for now, bye for now. I say yeah, 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 yeah. I told them I can be a fighter if you want. I'll be there to catch you if you fall.